afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. How are you? How are you, sir? Okay. So you are the only one who has joined. Let others join. So today we'll learn this in good detail. The Carnot cycle. So let me try something. This is Okay, so yeah, so still you are the one. So, have you understood this kind of cycle yesterday that we uh, discussed? Of course, we have not uh, discussed everything, like the numerical part, still we need to discuss, but uh, the various steps no, there are four steps and like two uh, one, two steps are expansions and the other two steps are compression okay one is uh, isothermal expansion and the other one is isothermal compression one is adiabatic expansion and the other one is adiabatic compression So anyway, let a few more come, then I will demonstrate the same curve, same cycle. Okay, let me start. I don't know. I wanted this very important topic. This cannot second. So I wanted all of them to be, all of you to be present. We have three people. Okay, uh, let me start. I cannot wait for them. It's already eight minutes gone. Okay, uh, let me share this uh, PowerPoint. PowerPoint because I can draw here.
okay so uh, the carnot cycle carnot cycle is what we are going to discuss right now okay along the x axis we have pressure e along the y axis we have volume v okay and uh, so Carnot cycle as yesterday we have uh, mentioned it involves four steps four stages one is the first one is isothermal expansion expansion means volume increase okay and uh, compression means volume decrease so this isothermal means the temperature must be constant so at t1 constant temperature the volume of the gas increases okay increases from here to here so this was given the name uh, okay somewhere here in the middle okay then the second step is adiabatic expansion uh, expansion not expression adiabatic this is isothermal this is adiabatic this is adiabatic expansion okay so in one of the earlier classes we have learned that the slope of this adiabatic graph adiabatic curve is greater than the slope of this isothermal okay so this is okay uh, okay let me do then again what we have so this is also expansion expansion of the gas from this here to here okay then the next step is isothermal compression okay compression means this time the volume of the gas is decreasing so here to here increase again now volume of the gas is decreasing that is isothermal uh, compression okay and this isothermal is uh, maintained at a temperature of t2 okay so t1 is the temperature of the source t2 is the temperature of the thing and the final uh, step in the process is the adiabatic compression Uh, okay, this does not look that good. Let me do one thing. Erase that. Let me again uh, draw it a bit better. Yeah, more or less, this is okay. Not very good, but okay. So, this is adiabatic compression. Why is the volume is decreasing? So, this point is given as a this is into cross section point means the section is given as b this section is given as c this is given as d okay so here this is isothermal okay and here the volume is in uh, the yeah, volume of the gas is increasing from left to right so isothermal expansion expansion isothermal expansion means the volume increases with the temperature remaining constant okay. what happened where are others they are not online yet only three of you okay this this is the t1 is the isothermal expansion now then the second step involved is this one adiabatic expansion let me write adiabatic adiabatic expansion adiabatic expansion means the no heat is supplied from outside or no heat is taken from the gas that means there is no 
the heat uh, exchange between the gas and the surrounding is zero okay that is the adiabatic expansion and because of this adiabatic expansion the gas does a work and uh, its temperature remains same gas then the gas does a work therefore there is a decrease in temperature actually when the gas expands there is a decrease in temperature okay in adiabatic expansion so now we uh, arrive at this particular temperature t2 okay okay so t1 is the temperature of source let me run here i am writing the note of this uh, it's a bit long no? so it, i am taking some time uh, by this week end i can share the note with you to understand the cycle very well then the note understanding the note itself will be very easy and this is sink temperature okay heat now uh, at same temperature at t2 temperature the gas undergoes a compression compression means decrease in volume from capital c to capital d okay so uh, uh, this uh, curve for thermal uh, just give me a minute all right here it is isothermal compression compression means reduction in or redu uh, the volume reduction okay c to d is isothermal compression okay now what you have to do you have to do adiabatic compression again compression means you have to reduce the volume of the gas in the adiabatic process adiabatic means again you are not supplying any heat from outside okay uh in that case what will happen the temperature of the gas will increase so if you reduce the volume of a gas its temperature increases if the process is adiabatic okay so from d to a this is the adiabatic compression this is adiabatic expansion this is adiabatic compression let me write this adiabatic compression okay so uh, this way uh, four steps are involved in carnot cycle isothermal expansion adiabatic expansion then isothermal compression adiabatic compression okay a b b c c d d e okay now what is the work done in the isothermal uh, work done in the carnot process okay this is carnot cycle let me write down the heading carnot C A R N O T Carnot cycle. Okay. So uh, this area enclosed capital A, capital B, capital uh, sorry capital A, capital B, capital C, and capital D. This area is the Carnot cycle. Okay. The area of a PV car pv graph is gives us the work done okay this is the work done during carnot's full cycle okay now uh, what is the work done uh, for uh, ab a to b isothermal expansion if you just draw from a uh, line dotted line dash line this is actually straight line but i am unable to draw a straight line suppose this is a small a this is again you draw a dotted line this is a small b 
for isothermal expansion from a to b a to b capital a to capital b what is the work done capital a capital uh, b small b small a this is the work done for isothermal expansion from a to b okay now what is the work done for adiabatic expansion from b to c in order to find that you have to draw a straight line from uh, so this straight line is not so straight actually we are calling it a straight line but it is not that straight it should have been straight actually because uh, it's difficult to draw exactly here but i hope you understand oh, small c this is small c okay and this is capital c so don't get confused uh, so what is the work done during adiabatic expansion capital b capital uh, c small c small b okay now uh, there is the next step is isothermal compression okay isothermal compression means you are reducing the volume of the gas keeping the temperature constant what is the uh, portion cd okay so uh, from d also you draw one straight line to the x axis suppose this is denoted as small d okay okay so what is the uh, area now of this uh, isothermal compression from capital c small c small d capital d okay this is the area of isothermal compression now the final step is adiabatic compression adiabatic compression means the temperature of the gas will increase again from t2 to t1 okay so uh, if you uh, like compress compress mean reduction in volume the volume will be reduced from d to a from d to a so moving uh, from right to left so the volume will be reduced okay so the, that is adiabatic compression okay so the area of adiabatic compression is capital d uh, small d small a capital a okay so have you understood now this i hope you have understood these steps now after this what you have to do is you have to find this uh, abcd the area of abcd so we have so many areas so the area of abcd you have to find okay uh let me see uh it can be yeah it is there so let me go back to the okay i'm uh okay let me save this okay let me save this and then i am going uh, and i am going to the main document So, uh, cycle. Just give some moments for it to say because we are having a video. No? Okay, I'm stopping this and I'm going to the main. Uh, the same document which we were discussing yesterday. So share. Yeah, I hope all of you can see this. Uh, yes okay so uh today uh the wa uh, work done per cycle so once you have moved from a to b b to c c to d d from d to back and from d back to a okay 
so how much work has been done okay so um, on equations 2 and 4 we find that w2 is equal to w3 okay so yesterday we have learned about these calculations let us find what is equation 2 yeah equation 2 w is equal to r t2 minus t1 1 minus gamma and w4 r t2 minus t1 by 1 minus gamma so they are actually equal you know so you have seen the values this value r t2 minus t1 by 1 minus gamma r t2 minus t1 by 1 minus gamma so these two values are actually equal okay so Hence the net work done. Okay, so uh, here it will be net work done. That will be uh, W1 plus W2 minus W3 minus W4. So why we are adding W1 and W2? Because W1 and W2 are expansion processes. Expansion process means the volume, the volumes have increased in w1 and w2 but the volumes have reduced in w2 sorry w3 and w4 okay that is just we have seen w1 is the work done due to isothermal expansion expansion volume increases w2 is the work done due to adiabatic expansion expansion means volume is increasing but in the W3, when the work done is compression, isothermal compression, so the volume is reducing and W4 is the adiabatic compression, that means the volume is also reducing. Okay. Have you understood this why we are taking network done? Because two processes are expansions and other two processes are compressions. For expansion, we are adding the work done. For compression, we are subtracting the work done. Okay. Okay. Now, as we have found already here, W2 is equal to W4. Then, you cancel W2 and W4 because they are equal quantities. Okay, MA and okay. So uh, W2 and W4 can be cancelled by because they are equal, you know, we have seen from these values. Therefore, what will be left um, for us only W1 minus W3 will be left for us. And W1 and W3, if you see the figure, it will be nothing but the area ABCD. Okay. So, let me go back to the figure here. So, uh, W1 is A, B, this, this and W3 is D, C. Um, B, D. D C B D A B D C B D A B C A oh no sorry this one D C uh, okay let me try to let okay just let me check once and then I will okay. so here we have uh these two get cancelled so we have a A B B C C D D A A B B C C D D A B B C C D D Okay A A B B C C D D So A A B B minus C C D D If you do this what will be left? This A, B, C, D will be left. 
ओके तो ए बी बी ए ए बी बी माइनस सी सी डिस्टेंस सी सी डी डी इफ यू सब्ट्रैक्ट वट विल बी रिमेनिंग दिस पोर्शन द अपर पोर्शन विल बी रिमेनिंग ए बी सी डी ओके दिस कैपिटल ए कैपिटल बी कैपिटल सी कैपिटल डी आई मीन अल्टीमेटली वट विल बी रिमेनिंग विथ हस only those four points where the isothermals only the uh, that portion when the where the isothermals and adiabatic have intersected one another okay that will be left a b c d okay uh, i hope this is clear to you so a b c d is the area that means this is the work done during isothermal or no this is the work done during the carnot cycle okay uh so what is it in next the equation shows that the net work done by carnot in the per cycle is equal to the area enclosed between the two thermals and the two adiabatics yeah that is what we have just discussed it is seen that the net work done this line the net work done uh, by carnot cycle is equal to the in, uh, area enclosed between the two isothermals and two adiabatics okay so in the previous power point figure which i have shown to you so the area between two isothermals and adiabatics is the net work done okay so uh, the net amount of heat absorbed okay so the net amount of heat absorbed okay so initial heat absorbed was q1 suppose and final heat rejected is suppose q2 both are not heat absorbed one is absorbed one is rejected q1 heat is taken from source okay and q2 heat is rejected to the sink so what is the net amount of heat absorbed in the process because q1 is always greater than q2 q1 is greater than q2 therefore the net heat absorbed is the work w is equal to q1 minus q2 okay is it clear is it clear up to this i hope so yes sir yeah so yeah so uh, the source is maintained at temperature t1 the sink is maintained at temperature t2 and q1 is the heat which is taken from the source maintained at temperature t1 and q2 is the amount of heat which is rejected to the sink at temperature t2 q1 is greater than q2 what is the work done work done will be whatever heat is gone q1 minus q2 q1 is always greater because the source is at a higher temperature than the sink therefore net amount of heat involved is q1 minus q2 and that is the net amount of work done w is equal to q1 minus q2 okay i hope you have understood up to this of course i will also upload this video in time so that you can also refer to the video okay, when you have confusion so what are this q1 and q2 values we have already calculated earlier if you remember okay the note i am writing and i also give it to you this thing should be in your note also so w is equal to w1 minus w3 which is q1 minus q2 so r q1 and uh, this these expressions okay i am not going to read because this is a numerical expression r is taken as common okay okay now uh, we need to do some um, uh, is this called we need to do some uh, simplifications okay what are the simplifications uh, 
B and C points lie on the same adiabatic. A and D like lie on the same adiabatic. So remember B and C lie on the same adiabatic. A and D lie on the same adiabatic. Let me go. Yeah. So this is the adiabatic B point and C point. Okay. Uh, so they lie on the same adiabatic. Capital A and capital D also lie on the same adiabatic. Okay. Similarly, A and B lie on the same isothermal and D and C or C and D lie on the same isothermal. Okay. Is this clear? Let me know. Is this clear to you? Sir, please repeat again. Okay, let me draw. Then, if I draw, then you understand. Okay, so this one, this curve is isothermal. This is isothermal. Okay, and these two uh, steeper curves are adiabatic. Okay, so we have A here, we have B here. We have C here, we have D here. A, B, C, D are nothing but the points of cross section between the two adiabatics and the two isothermals. Okay. So, A and D, this is adiabatic. Okay. This is adiabatic. A and D lie on the same adiabatic. Adiabatic means adiabatic curve. Similarly, B and C lie on the same adiabatic. This adiabatic curve. Okay. Now clear? Not clear yet? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Clear. Yeah, that's the adiabatic. Okay, I'm writing A, D, adiabatic. So this is also adiabatic. Okay. Why we are considering these points? Because we have to take the equation of equations of state for adiabatic and isothermal processes. So, but before that, you have to learn about the positions of the two points. Similarly, this is isothermal. T1 is one isothermal and T2 is another isothermal. Yeah, I also given here. T1 is this isothermal. T2 is this isothermal. Okay. So, Points A and B lie on the same isothermal. This is I am writing this as I. I means for I I S. Okay, I S is for isothermal. Okay. Similarly, points C and D they also lie on the uh, same isothermal. Okay. So is it clear now? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, the video will be there. You can always. Pause the video and see what I am talking about. Okay, that's why I am using actually this WebEx platform no? so that the videos can be recorded easily and you can access the videos whenever you want. Okay, so A B lie on the same isothermal, C D lie on the same isothermal, B C lie on the same adiabatic, A D lie on the same adiabatic. Okay. I am removing the annotation because I am going back to where we left earlier. Okay, now that we have an expression of equation, this equation 5, uh, B, 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 A, B, C, B, D. So we have to establish a relationship between this B, A, B, C, D, okay. Because uh, otherwise we are just stuck here and we cannot go any further. Therefore, uh, the important thing is we need to find a relationship between VA, VB, VC and VD. Okay. That is why they considering these things are important. Okay. Like B and C on the same adiabatic. Now, why we have written this PB, VB uh, to the power gamma, PC, VC to the power gamma. Again, I am going back to the equation of state for an adiabatic. Pb to the power gamma is a constant. Okay. This is the equation of state for an adiabatic process. Okay. 
at B and C if PB and VB are uh, pressure and volume at B if PB and VB are pressure and volume and at C if PC and VC are pressure and volume so according to this equation this equation of the state uh, of an uh, adiabatic so what we can write PB VB to the power gamma is equal to PC VC to the power gamma okay have you understood this because uh, the multiplication is a constant anyway similarly when a and d are on the same adiabatic considering this uh, adiabatic equation of state pd vd to the power gamma is equal to pa va to the power gamma okay so have you understood this i hope you understood this okay now isothermal at t1 okay isothermal so uh, we have just discussed how the points a and b lie on the same isothermal so a and b lie on the same isothermal t1 so isothermal equation of state is pv equal to rt okay or uh, not t1 rt so we can write p1 v1 equal to p2 v2 okay therefore uh, at a and b if uh, a, this p a v a p b v b are the pressure and volume therefore p a v a equal to p b v b okay this is the equation of state for an isothermal process similarly points uh, c and d this is written as a this is not a but this is c and d similarly points c and d lie on the same isothermal t2 okay in that case we can write p c v c equal to p d v d okay have you understood up to this i hope so because same uh, yes, for adiabatic processes this is the adiabatic equation of state for isothermal processes this is the isothermal equation of state okay and from the graph you find out which points are in the adiabatic and which points are in the isothermal okay okay so we have so many equations now uh, so many one two three four we have four equations so two each for adiabatics and two each for isothermal okay so from all the multiplying corresponding sides of uh, all the equations okay uh, so these two steps i am not going for these two steps this will be very long and confusing for you i am directly coming to this particular step this one okay so not going to this um, intermediate step so it will confusing so uh, what we will get we will get uh, vb divided by va is equal to vc divided by vd so here if in, in this equation there was no correlation between uh, va vb vc vd but therefore to simplify this this equation we needed to find out a relationship between va vb vc and vd and this is the relationship vb divided by va equal to vc divided by vd okay is this clear so how this happens so don't go for this this is confusing in exam you will not get this much time so you have to remember certain steps no if uh, this question is given like uh, find the expression of efficiency for a, a kernel cycle okay so therefore uh, how can we write equation 5 now equation 5 can be written as w is equal to w1 minus w3 equal to q1 minus q2 okay earlier we knew this and uh so now that vb divided by uh va is equal to vc divided by vd so from this equation uh it will be common va divided by vb will be common so log of uh vb divided by uh, va is common and uh, we will have t1 here t2 here so t1 minus t2 it can be written like this so have you understood this equation to confirm so why we are simplifying this because yes, we found that gb divided by va equal to pc divided by v if you want personally you can uh, do this step by yourself okay 
but here to save some time and not to confuse you a little confuse you so i am just skipping this directly coming to this equation so in exam if you are working on this problem once you reach this uh, state this stage so if you get db by va is equal to vc by vd so always remember that these two quantities are equal this uh, quantity is equal to this quantity okay va by sorry bb by va equal to vc divided by vd so in place of vc divided by vd we are uh, simply writing bb uh, divided by va in that case uh, t1 and t2 they are different quantities so t1 and t2 can be taken as common okay? and also r is there r is here okay so i have removed all these annotations so not required now so uh, okay so this is the this is the amount of work done okay so the expression for work done by Carnot's reversible heat engine in one cycle is okay this is the work done in Carnot's reversible heat engine okay so is it clear up to this okay i hope it is clear Okay, yes, now efficiency. We need to find efficiency. Efficiency is generally given by, by this Greek letter called eta. Okay, this one. Efficiency is work done divided by heat taken. How much work you have done uh, from the initial heat taken? This is the definition of efficiency. So I have given you one note on uh, no, heat engines. In heat engines, we have discussed this quickly or uh, briefly. Efficiency is the ratio of the work done to the heat absorbed from the source. Okay. So remember this efficiency, work done divided by heat absorbed from the source. Okay. Okay. Uh, so work done efficiency is uh, going to next page. Okay, in five minutes if you may. So amount of heat converted to one and total amount of heat absorbed from the source. Okay. So total amount of uh, so amount of work done is equal to already we have learned. So uh, again I'm doing the annotation. W is equal to Q1 minus Q2. Okay, Q1 is the amount of heat taken from the source minus Q2 is the amount of heat given to the thing okay that is why w is equal to q1 minus q2 and q1 total amount of heat absorbed from the source so total amount of heat absorbed from the source is nothing but this uh, q1 okay therefore uh, q1 minus q2 divided by q1 okay so w w divided by q1 is the efficiency this one divided by q1 is the efficiency okay so it will give us 1 minus q2 by q1 or 1 minus t2 by t1 so how okay in place so in case of t2 by t1 so this is the work done in one kind of cycle and this quantity is the q1 no? q1 means this was the uh, work done in the isothermal expansion okay so if you just divide in very simple division this quantity is common on both sides r is common on both sides get cancelled so we'll be left with t1 minus t2 divided by t1 which is equal to 1 minus t2 divided by t1 so this expression so eta is equal to 1 minus t2 divided by t1 or eta is the efficiency of the we have learned t2 divided by t1 So this is the expression for distance. Okay. So have you understood this? So some numerical problem may also be based on this. Suppose a question may be what is the efficiency of a Carnot cycle if the hot source is maintained at 500 Kelvin and the cold sink is maintained at 300 Kelvin. That you can calculate. 
if uh, what is the efficiency of a Carnot engine if uh, some suppose 1000 calorie of heat is taken from a source uh, and uh, 500 calorie is rejected to the sink then what is the efficiency then also you can calculate okay so this is the efficiency and this uh, we have been trying to learn this for last two weeks okay so have you understood this understood means the video will be there and I will also give you the notes separately in Google Classroom. Not today, but uh, in next one or two days. It's quite a lengthy. Okay. Okay. So I am stopping the annotation. And some uh, uh, small things are there. And uh, I think there will be several numerical problems in the book also. Those numerical problems. If you, I will also uh, discuss or I can give you uh, assignment. Or home. Okay. Okay. So I'm stopping the share here because in a few uh, minutes, one minute or so, our uh, meeting will end.